Hello, can you help me? Maybe I'm Brother Terence of Tarlest. I'm trying to find out about Hugh Farringdon. Did you know him? I knew him. I was a monk in Reading Abbey when he was our wonderful abbot. Do you know why Reading Abbey was built in 1121 by King Henry I? Yes, as a final resting place for him and his future family. Some say it's also in atonement for his belief that it upset God. Why? Who else was responsible for his son and heir, William Adeline, drowning in the White Ship disaster? What type of abbey was it? It was founded as one of the French Clunier order. It's for a branch of the Benedictines who followed a particular interpretation of St. Benedict's rule. This put an emphasis on chanting and ritual, hence my black robe. Was it a big and important abbey? And what about Hugh? Most definitely, containing one of the largest churches in Britain and regularly visited by kings and queens and other important people. Hugh was an important and kind man. Do you know he had 20 servants? One of his first acts as abbot was to buy his mother a seat in the nearby St Lawrence Church. How did Hugh Farringdon become the abbot of Reading Abbey? He was elected in 1520 by the other monks upon the death of Abbot Thomas Worcester. How did he get his strange name? A bit like me. He was born Hugh Cook and probably adopted Farringdon when he became a monk after his British hometown, northwest of Reading. And I was born near Reading, in the village of Tarlest. Do you know if Hugh had a good relationship with King Henry VIII? Initially, yes. King Henry VIII was Hugh's guest on the 30th of January, 1521, and at several other times. Hugh became a royal chaplain. In 1532, Henry gave Hugh £20, that would be nearly a £1,000 in current money, in a white leather purse as a New Year's gift. Do you have any other examples? Well, I know they both like hunting. Sometimes together in nearby Whitley Park, Hugh took these opportunities to send King some Kennet trout and hunting knives. Did Hugh have other jobs? Several. He was a mitred abbot, entitled to wear a special hat and sit in the House of Parliament. House of Lords from 1523 to 1539. He was present at the passing of the Act of Suppression in 1539. He was also a Justice of the Peace. King Henry VIII was having problems producing a male heir. Do you know if Hugh tried to help? Well, he sent 17 books to help Henry in his search for canon law authority to submit to the Pope requesting annulment of his marriage to Catherine of Aragon, Henry's first wife. Also, by signing the letter of request, in 1536 he signed the Act of Supremacy and Hugh said one of Jane Seymour's funeral masses, Jane was Henry's third wife. King Henry VIII then broke with the Roman Catholic Church. Did Hugh surrender his abbey? No one knows. When the commissioners arrived to take the abbey, they reported favourably on Hugh's willingness to conform. I believe a draft token and parchment was presented to Hugh to sign. But did he send it? Did he sign it to surrender Reading Abbey? Probably not. Wasn't Hugh indicted for high treason? Yes, my highly respected abbot was now a wanted man. Tracked down to his manor, Beer Court, at Pangbourne. Then taken to the Tower of London, where he was held for two months. Do you know what happened next? Well, as a mitred abbot, Hugh would have been entitled to be tried by Parliament. But Thomas Cromwell, the Chancellor, knew Reading Abbey had been dissolved in September 1539. Therefore, Hugh had lost this right. Some say Nasty Thomas had found Hugh guilty before his trial had even begun. So this was not cricket. Sorry, that game had not been invented then. I meant it was not fair. Do you know why Hugh was being tried for high treason? I believe it alleged Hugh, John Rugg and John Eon, who had made comments supporting the Pope, 
and taken actions of effectively denying King Henry VIII supremacy over the English church. This had made, been made high treason by the Act of Supremacy of the Crown in 1536. Concerning Hugh, the charges related to dates between 1536 and 1537. Do you know what happened next? All three were found guilty of treason. They were dragged on hurdles round the centre of Reading, then hanged, drawn and quartered. I think it was near the Inner Abbey, Gatehouse, on the 14th of November, 1539. A most terrible and deserved death for my master. I prayed that his life and of the others had been ended by the hanging, either by mistake or on purpose, to spare them further pain. This sounds gruesome. Do you know why King Henry VIII saw it as necessary? I have heard that the motives for these terrible acts was to persuade the other abbots thinking of refusing to surrender their religious houses that if they didn't surrender them, they would face a similar nasty end. So could it be said to have worked? Most definitely, if you were Henry VIII or one of his nasty henchmen. All abbeys had surrendered by 1540. Why? Because the king was bankrupt. He needed the land and the gold in the churches to sell to support his extravagant lifestyle. Lavish parties, building the Royal Navy, financing war with France yet again. Much more than he needed a male successor. So is Hugh remembered formally? Yes, much later, Hugh was declared a martyr of the Catholic Church and beatified, one step short of being made a saint, by Pope Leo XIII on 1895. His fifth feast day is the 15th of November. This bestowed upon Hugh the title Blessed. Is Hugh remembered locally? Yes, in several ways. There's a plaque on the English Martyrs Church in Reading. Also, Hugh's horrendous death is depicted in the painting Martyrdom of Hugh Farrington, Last Abbot of Reading, by Harry Morley in 1917, now in the Museum of Reading Collection. The Blessed Hugh Farrington Catholic School, a specialist performing arts college in Reading, named after him as it's documented that Hugh was a patron of learning. And there is a Blessed Hugh Catholic Church in his hometown of Farringdon. Finally, Hugh has a stained glass window depicting him in St James's Roman Catholic Church that occupies part of the footprint within Reading's ruined abbey.